Hello, my name is Dia Patel, I'm 15 years old, and today I would like to speak about eggs and the egg industry. Eggs. Aren't they delicious? I mean, looking at the pictures up here, it's fairly easy to tell that there are thousands and even millions of recipes involving the food. But as you might be able to tell, good taste isn't always the same as good health. This presentation will delve into what eggs do to impact your health and well-being, explore some alternatives to the popular ingredient, and finally, bring to light some largely unknown events that take place behind the scenes of cultivation and distribution. Let's start off with the topic of health and well-being. We can divide this into short-term and long-term, and begin with the short-term effects. Two potential immediate effects of consuming eggs are contracting salmonella, which could lead to Reader's syndrome, as well as an infectious bacteria known as MRSA. Seemingly normal eggs may or may not contain salmonella, which is passed to the inside of the egg from the body of the carrier hen before the eggshells even developed and the egg is laid. Salmonella is a germ that, when entered into the body, causes cramping, diarrhea, vomiting, and fever. Reader's syndrome is a type of arthritis that can be triggered by salmonella. Symptoms of Reader's syndrome are pain, swelling, redness, and heat in the joints and spine. Another more serious affliction is MRSA, standing for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. This is a bacterium that causes skin infection in various parts of the body. These skin infections generally start out as swollen, red bumps that are extremely painful and warm to the touch, and they may be accompanied by a fever. Once you have it, MRSA is very difficult to treat and cure because the bacteria strain itself is resistant to several commonly used antibiotics. In a few instances, MRSA can cause urine infections, pneumonia, infection of the internal organs, which is known as sepsis, and even death. Going back to the eggs, this bacterium can enter eggs from the outside, find its way through the eggshell and its semi-permeable membrane to the inside, and in a study done, 11% of all eggs contain traceable amounts of infectious MRSA. While this does not mean that for every omelet you've had in your life, one bite of it will give you MRSA, because you should be okay if you were to cook it well, you still run the more than 1 in 10 risk of contracting MRSA any time you eat raw or even slightly undercooked eggs. Long term, consumption of eggs have been proven to cause breast cancer, heart disease, blood clots, and stroke. In 2015, an analysis was done in which scientists monitored a group of people who consumed more than five eggs per week, keeping another group of people who consumed no eggs as a control group. The analysis concluded with ele elevated risk in breast cancer, as well as prostate and ovarian cancers, while the control group managed an average risk level throughout. The cancer risk was caused by the high levels of cholesterol and choline found in eggs. Surveys find that the higher the level of cholesterol in your diet, the higher your chance is of getting heart or cardiovascular disease, as well as stroke. This isn't really great news because eggs are the most cholesterol-rich foods in the common American diet. The consumption of 300 milligrams of dietary cholesterol per day is directly correlated with a 17% higher risk of heart disease. As you can see on the picture above, one large egg has more than half of this 300 milligram value. However, Healthline, an American health information provider, claims that three eggs per day are perfectly suitable for most. If we were to do the math, three eggs are equivalent to 561 milligrams of cholesterol, which is nowhere near healthy. One cancer-causing nutrient mentioned earlier, choline, also causes blood clots. While choline is essential for the body, too much of it can boost the production of a chemical called TMAO. TMAO, or trimethylamine and oxide, increases the blood cell's tendency to clot. Some people eat eggs because of the fact that they are rich in protein, as well as vitamin B and vitamin D. 
The following slides are dedicated to a list of alternatives to get the same level, if not more, of these important nutrients. Protein. As we can see on this slide, various types of beans are rich in protein, with soybeans and lupin beans having the greatest amount, with 36 grams of protein per 100 grams each, compared to the 13 grams in eggs. Vitamin B6. On this slide, we can see that the superfoods are chickpeas and pinto beans. These beans both have 0.5 milligrams of vitamin B6, compared to the 0.1 milligrams per 100 grams we can find in eggs. Unfortunately, vegan sources of vitamin B12 are limited, so the best way to tackle a B12 deficiency, which is very common, is by consuming fortified foods, such as fortified cereals and fortified plant-based milks, as well as taking regular vitamins and B12 supplements. One additional food that is relatively high in vitamin B12 is nutritional yeast. Vitamin D. Mushrooms are one of the only vegan sources of vitamin D found in nature, other than sunlight. Here, our superfoods are morel mushrooms, as well as maitake mushrooms, with 208 international units and 614 international units, respectively, per 1,000 grams, compared to the 87 international units found in eggs. These graphs all prove one thing. You don't need to continue to ruin your health by eating eggs only to get your vitamins. Right here on this slide is everything you need to consume in order to not only get all essential nutrients, but go above and beyond with superfoods. But you still might be thinking, eggs are delicious. Even if they aren't good for me, I will still eat them because of the fact that they taste good, just like burgers or milkshakes. But the real question is, would you rather be happy or would you rather be healthy? If you already consume eggs, the information I have provided so far already proves that the word healthy is completely out of the equation. And let's just say that if your health is on the line, your happiness will most likely be down in the dumps. But the information I am about to give you might just further show you that momentary happiness is not always what it seems. A lot of us are making a mistake. It's happened with dairy. It's happened with meat. And it's happening to eggs, too. Once again, we have gotten so distracted by how these foods taste that we've forgotten about the animals that provide us with them. In the case of this presentation, we've forgotten the eggs. Before we begin the following section of this video, I would like to make it clear that some of these pictures may be graphic. While it is understandable that these photos or videos might be a bit on the unsightly side, they are crucial to understand the depth and severity of the topic. Before the eggs come the chickens. So, this is a domesticated hen. This is a female wild jungle fowl, or wild hen. In other words, the animal on the left is actually a domesticated version of the bird on the right. The catch here is, wild fowl only lay about 13 eggs per year. However, domestic hens lay an average of roughly 270. The reason why this is such a major deal is because of how much egg laying can sicken a hen. Laying eggs more often than what's normal depletes them of several vital nutrients and can cause severe calcium deficiencies that leaves them unable to stand. The egg industry is not small. 300 million hens are used by the industry yearly, each laying, as stated earlier, roughly 270 eggs per year. This means that the American egg industry produces roughly 54 billion eggs yearly. That's a lot of eggs. Approximately half of them, 27 billion, are fertilized and develop embryos. These eggs are cultivated and placed into incubators meaning that they will hatch in the company of machines rather than the company of their mothers. After hatching, immediately after hatching, these chicks are sexed or separated between male and female. Going by this video here, clearly they aren't handled gently. 
The female chicks will grow up to be hens and start producing eggs for the industry. Male chicks are unable to lay eggs of their own and therefore are useless to the egg industry. For that reason, males are slaughtered as well as the unwanted female chicks. This is known as chick culling and is the main form of death in more than 50% of all chicks born into the industry. Every year, more than 300 million chicks are culled. There are two common ways of doing so. One, suffocation. Many chicks are killed by getting thrown into trash bags, which will then be sealed and reopened once all of them are dead. Two, maceration. In this context, maceration is defined as grinding up. In the United States, this is the most common way to discard of the supposedly useless chicks who are thrown onto conveyor belts that drop them alive onto the grinder blades, which will shred them into a pulp. No anesthesia or painkillers are administered during this process, and chicks are awake, conscious, and feeling. This process, as well as the many other ways to cull in the United States, such as crushing or gassing, is entirely legal. And for those under the impression that chick culling is a phenomenon that occurs primarily in the United States, it's not. This happens globally over practically all inhumane egg industries, though different countries kill chicks in different ways. For example, in India, the most common ways to kill chicks is to burn them alive, drown them, throw them directly into fish ponds, crush them to death, throw them into the garbage, and be intentionally stomped on by barefoot workers. The less than half surviving female chicks are then sent to get their beaks chopped off with a white hot blade. This process is known as de-beaking. The industries that do this claim that the process is merely the same pain level as trimming your fingernails. This is entirely untrue as the beaks are filled with blood vessels sensory nerves, and pain receptors, all of which heighten the feeling of physical suffering. It's safe to say that debeaking is not the same level as trimming your fingernails, but rather the same level as chopping off your fingertips. In fact, the pain is so bad that often, hens can die of shock on the spot, or die of starvation and dehydration, and studies show that debeaking not only causes severe immediate pain, but chronic pain that lasts the rest of hens' lives. The main reason why debeaking is such a large practice today is to keep hens from pecking themselves or each other, which is what egg industries like to call cannibalism. The truth is that pecking is actually a habit that hens are found to do when they are stressed and upset, and by debeaking them, farmers are actually removing a coping mechanism. The truth is the industry actually forces the birds to adopt cannibalistic nature due to the fact that the leftover meat, fat, blood, and bones from the chicken slaughterhouse is added to chicken feed. Plus, it's pretty hard not to peck anyone if your home looks like this. In the industry, an average of 5 to 11 hens are crammed into tiny wire cages known as battery cages. Each hen only gets the living space of roughly a 9 by 11 piece of printer paper. That's even smaller than the hen herself. These battery cages are made entirely of metal wire. This can cause foot problems and injuries, including soreness, cracking, and deformities. The hen's feet can also become trapped in the wire, leading them to be unable to access necessities, causing starvation, dehydration, and ultimately, death. Furthermore, due to the upright nature of these cages, urine and feces fall from the cages at the top to the cages on the bottom. This continues to build up, having rarely been cleaned out, and actually causes a great deal of ammonia to be released into the air. The bad air combined with the ammonia can, in turn, cause eye infections, viral infections, and respiratory infections. Due to the atrocious living conditions, combined with the lack of basic hygiene, many hens die in these battery cages. Often, rather than cleaning out these bodies, the dead hens are simply left to rot in the same confinities as the living hens. After only two years, hens begin to exhaust and slow their egg production. When this happens, it's time for the egg industry to ship them off 
to the meat industry. Federal humane slaughter laws do not, in fact, apply to poultry. This basically grants the industry freedom to murder poultry however they wish without any legal trouble. In the meat industry, firstly, chickens are tied upside down on conveyor belts. These conveyor belts carry them to a water bath stunner. This is basically a large tank of water that's been electrically charged. A water bath stunner is designed to knock the birds out so they don't feel anything following. While using a stunner is infinitely better than not using one at all, at least 1-2% to of the hens manage to avoid the water and are left conscious. Following the stunner, the conveyor belts send the birds to a rotating blade, which will slit their throats. Throat slitting is painless to the birds who have been stunned, but is excruciatingly painful to the birds that are still awake. Seconds later, however, they can be put out of their misery when they're dunked in yet another bath this one filled with boiling water. No hens have been known to survive this final ordeal. Sadly, hens in the egg industry are only kept alive for two years, while the average lifespan of a healthy hen can go all the way up to 15 years. Chickens are often depicted as lacking intelligence and having no thoughts. However, study after study shows that chickens do display several types of emotions, empathy and fear included. So imagine how a human being would feel if they were to never have seen their parents and had more than half of a chance of being grinded up alive as soon as they were born. If they were to face unbearable pain by removing an essential body part and had to live on mesh wires their whole lives with dead rotting bodies right next to them. If they were forced to push themselves to the very limit and then be killed after only a few years. Most people would say that sounds like torture, which is true. The egg industry is doing nothing short of torture, and we are simply eating the victims and their eggs, without even knowing that eggs aren't even good for our bodies in the first place, some of the side effects they cause being deadly. We have no reason at all to be consuming eggs, and even more reasons not to. These are my references. Thank you for watching this video. By continuing the consumption of eggs, we are continuing to prolong the endless pain and suffering that hens and chicks must go through, with no benefit of our own other than taste. I believe we can do better. I have been vegan for over a year now, and I hope this video was persuasive enough for you to make a similar decision. Once again, thank you.